Whether it's a horse or a human, we need to help them not become a victim anymore and stay as a victim. We all need a purpose in life. We need a reason to get up in the morning. These guys do too, you know, we all do. What we're trying to do here is give these Mustangs a life. You know, when you put some of the toughest human beings in the world with arguably some of the toughest horses in the world together and they're both curing each other of what they both need, and that's exactly what this program's about. It's about transforming the lives of people and transforming the lives of horses. Here we are looking for specific qualities to see if they're going to meet the needs of the program. And if we can't draw them out, then we won't be successful. You're about to have a crazy adventure on Pressure peels back the layers to original thought. And we have to put these horses through that process so that we know what they're capable of. The only way we can do that is by covering country. do is we're going to cut out each one of our horses. We each took two. And uh, each one of us will be partnered with you guys for the next five days. Let's get them trained. Let's get them trained. These horses, it's a big transformation for them. A lot of these horses may have only been captured two, three months ago. So it's a big transition from total wild horse to now being in captivity. You know, it's probably a little stressful for them, but that's our job as a trainer to make it as pleasant and as understanding so, you know, we can get a pretty good relationship started. Well, the feelings of a horse when you start doing something with them, you know, something new. So the way I do it is like no force at all. You know, let them know then, okay, I'm here not to hurt you. I'm here to be your friend. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Let's go. Come on. You know, my philosophy is, is do whatever you can. Always allow the horse the freedom to make mistakes, the freedom to get away. to freedom to run from what he's afraid of. And eventually he'll learn to face his fear. And that's what I try to teach him is to face their fear instead of running from it. You're good. You 
good, bro. Just hang out here with us. I like to do as much as I can without forcing them to do anything. It needs to be their free choice. But we're making this the comfortable place to be for him and not the pressure place. So we're trying to take pressure off of him when he's with us, put pressure on him when he's going somewhere else, wanting to be somewhere else, you know. And eventually out in the whole world, there's going to be more pressure than be here with us. And that's where he's going to get the, you know, the peace. I started looking at a lot of my friends and their lives when I got out of service. I began to realize that there was a dramatic need. A lot of guys that were once great warriors become marginalized and addicted to various substances. The suicide rates are just staggering. I know quite a few guys that have taken their own lives. What I've seen over the years is working with horses like this and helping people work with horses is it's not just about the horse, it's really more about us. It takes a lot to intimidate me. That's probably the most vulnerable I've made myself in a really long time. Really left a mark on me just connecting with that horse. And, and this is the very beginning part of a relationship that is gonna be for the next 20 years. trip like this really is, is comes down to the nuts and bolts and logistics and getting 16 wild horses uh, across New Mexico and Arizona presents some pretty serious challenges that when you really come down from the 40,000 foot view, um, it's, it's an immense amount of work. Conceptualizing this and then actually doing it has been a real challenge. Seven days a week, we're with the horses, gather everybody, head to the office and work half a day, and then um, take back off and seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, come home and do that seven days a week. And... I think it's a lot like people. It's looking at a new approach, you know, it's not one size fits all with horses. We need to prepare these animals for, you know, what's ahead, and it's our responsibility to do that. Give them every opportunity to be good and stay good, but when they get off, you know, let them run into a boundary and then encourage that when they're right on, and then they'll hunt what's right on. He's come really easy, this horse. Here. Got ahead of mother could love only. Hey. Easy. Easy, Grant. <laughs> Very good work.
been really a pleasure kind of watching him and take off yesterday and put him away bareback and just ride out there. It's been amazing to watch. You're a very determined person. I, I think a lot of people have, and I'm not saying I don't have an issue with fear, but I acknowledge it and it doesn't bother me, I guess. I think that comes from childhood and growing up and experiences and the occupation we used to do. Some of the greatest things I've done, I was terrified out of my mind, but I was willing to do it. I've been doing horses for a year. And that's loose, that's a loose term, doing horses. Barely so, a year. <laughs> barely a year. And, you know, I might be uh, feeling it on the inside. I think I internalize things very well. I learned a lot from my grandfather. He used to say, trátalo bien, trátalo bien, trátalo bien. That means be good to him, be good to him, be good to him. And one of the most important things uh, I learned from him is then respect for, for the animals, respect to the, to the horses. And when you have respect to them, they're gonna respect you too. Well, when you get the, their confidence, trust, and connect with them, they connect with you, you can do basically everything you want. Good boy. The old philosophy was force, fear, intimidation, and repetition. You make them do it against their will. They hated it. Too bad, we forced them. You made a slave out of the horse, and a lot of horses, even today, are slaves. And you can tell when you go to catch them, they're not, their heart isn't with you. They'll turn their head away and just kind of put up with you, but they're, they're not really not with you inside. Just because you do good things for people or just because you served your country doesn't mean that life is going to be good to you. A lot of guys think, hey, just because I, you know, I joined the military and all of a sudden everybody owes me something and, and what they need to realize is that they owe themselves. This is a different, it's more of a negotiation. The relationship with my horse is more important than what that horse can do for me or how good he makes me look. That used to be really important to me. Now what's important is that relationship between me and my horse. You think of your horse like a student or even a child. He's just trying to help him be the best that he can be at what he's kind of built and designed to be. I began to lose an identity. I began to lose a sense of who I was. And I was defining my life by those scars. I wasn't growing and I wasn't evolving. I wasn't realizing that the challenges in my life were actually adding value to it, but I wasn't ready to accept that. Working with these horses has made me change some aspects of my life that I normally probably wouldn't have done, which has been a necessity to accomplish this mission. And come home and do that seven days a week and be a dad and four kids, manage a household. It's been, uh, it's been a challenge, but I would say it's been one of the most rewarding experiences in my life as well, because through this process, uh, I've learned a lot about myself, things that I don't think I would have ever learned had I not been through this experience. I think the most important thing about this project is about building a team of people that have roles and responsibilities and are results-driven individuals. 
it's not one singular idea, but it's a community of ideas that get together to accomplish one thing. It's really uh, quite an undertaking to uh, plan this kind of trip. A major concern at the beginning was snow levels. So we had to find trails that, we, that didn't have old snow and drifts that we couldn't navigate through. So we had to find logistically places that we could start and finish without going over mountaintops. We started as far north as possible, in which would happen to be Cuamado, New Mexico. We're gonna have between nine and 10,000 pounds of hay cubes. We're gonna have places where we're gonna have to be supplied with water. Just containing these animals where there's no trees. And obstacles are gonna come and that's just a part of life. And if this wasn't a struggle and this wasn't a challenge, it wouldn't have any value. So no, I don't have any doubts. I just, uh, you know, whether we're there for four weeks or five weeks or whatever, we're gonna make it happen. I'm just going to pull, well, if I put it here and I put that block right there. Of a wreck. Listen, if there is a wreck and a horse comes towards you, guys, your job is to stay on the horse. Remain calm, remember your horsemanship. Check your cinches, make sure none of those rings are in the armpit of your horse. First thing we're gonna do is saddle up. We're gonna head down this row. We're gonna water our horses and we're gonna come back up in about 0.8 miles hit the CDT trail. I have never packed at this many unbroke stock. Usually you, you put a young one in with experienced ones and that's how they learn. And then you put another young one and another one. So I've never worked at this many young stock. The hardest thing about this young stock is, is getting them in the string, who's gonna get along, what order do you put them in. You don't know until you absolutely do it. And it all went pretty good. But putting a lot of miles on quickly, we did 60 miles in two days once. So that's what's been helpful, is the early, hard days to get them lined up. We have experience at all in, in the route. I you know some of the days with Russ with the route, I remember I would, I would talk to him and I would be like, you know, it'd be a 25 mile day in the mountains, in the big mountains. So I'd look at Russ and I'm like, man, this is a huge day. And we'd get it done. We had a lot of late nights. Like we rode at night quite a bit. The pressures here are primarily taking care of those horses. Those horses come before everything. They get fed before the people. They water before the people. They get bedded down before people. You know, they are the number one priority here. So that horse has a, a bad cut on the inside of his nose. This morning, it's really stinking bad. And it is infected. He should be all healed up by the end of the trip. Anyway, it's just a little stinky mess you got to deal with. And it's horses, you're just constantly cleaning them, feeding them, and doctoring them. <laughs> so the pressure is making sure they're OK. And guys like me who aren't necessarily used to that, it gives you something positive to put your energy into. It gives you something positive to put your focus on and your purpose into. Before I started the program, I was, you know, kind of a switch, not a dial. And working with these horses, working with these guys out in these challenging situations taught me to have a dial. It, it taught me to temper myself. You don't have a choice. You won't get to the next trailhead if you're not tempering yourself. That horse will not take you there. He'll take you wherever you want to go, but he's only going to take you so far as, as you can treat him. It's something that even in special operations for seven years, I, I didn't learn anything like that. We're all the same type of predator animal. That's a prey animal. That's a herd prey animal. And if you act like that predator around them, like you're always ready to go, you're always on the edge, that's how they're going to react to you. And you have to learn how to bring it all back. You have to refocus all of your energy from something mission critical, like an objective to get to and a target to hit, to making sure that guy is OK at the end of the day. He's not soared up. He's not cut. He's, he's, you know, he's taken care of. It's pretty incredible to be able to see the entire world differently just from working with these guys. You know, they're really designed for this hardy lifestyle with their, with their hard hose, their intelligence, their willingness to please, 
You know, we've had very, very few problems with the stock so far. You know, with three months under the belts, it's amazing what these guys are doing. Absolutely amazing. When we first started this program, when we, when we first came to the shoot, we really have a quiet eye and a good demeanor. And, and today, Parrot, he works alongside some broken Mustangs we've had for years. So hopefully we can get a lot of people to want to have more interest in these Mustangs and give them a good home. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I gotta maintain my tough guy image. Come on, pal. Oh, I know. You know, there's so much downtime when you're in the saddle and going all these miles and. You know, it means a little bit to everybody, but the things that we kind of get in rhythm with is our own breathing and the breathing of the horse, the horse's hooves as they walk, uh, the movement of the horse, and we all just kind of become together with nature. It's, you know, a time that we really bond with these horses. It's uh, that cohesiveness. Being in the saddle and kind of being back by yourself with your pack string and your mind starts to slow down. That comes with your string and the horse you're riding. You become so attuned to it, and your hearing becomes so aware of it. It's uh, quite a special time to be able to you know, have it, as much of that as we've had. It really makes going back to civilization uh, that much more difficult. Ultimately, this process was to see these horses go through this intense training cycle so we could test them under every condition imaginable. We had to create a template about where we needed to be, and small goals began to equal bigger goals, and that's how we, we got through this process. We've gone through every extreme. I mean, when we started this thing, it was like freezing cold mornings. I mean. 15, 20 degrees out, and then, you know, 70 degree days and high winds and big climbs, big country, remote country. I mean, we have transitioned through so many different types of weather. I think we've pretty much experienced it all. cruising up the trail and he's just starting to pull his map out and as he was pulling his map out a mountain biker came down the hill and it looked to me like he just about ran into him pretty dramatically and the horse turned 180 and once I got my horse under control I turned around I saw Russ and he was laying face down in a cactus he was saying I'm hurt I'm hurt that just spooked the horses and they got after it and they ran into that choya 
You know, Russ doesn't remember any of it. Can you can you tell me at all about what happened? No, it doesn't lick. Nothing? No. OK. Uh, yeah, dude, these dudes are like covered in Choya. Their faces, everything. Yeah. Uh, slow. Oh, Come on, buddy. He's in route. He's in route. He's in route now. They said it's about probably like one hour to get there. How do you feel? You sore? Yeah, I'm sore. Are you? Okay. I got I got to change my jeans because I still have cactus in my jeans. Yeah. So other than losing a little sleep, I'm pretty good. When I went in the hospital, I saw him. He just wanted to get back on the trail, and there was like I didn't even have the heart to even tell him to take a day off because I knew it had to be a personal decision. He has two broken orbitals, a broken nose, and a concussion. He's in his 50s. That's just a level of commitment that he has to seeing this thing to the end. For me to get back on the trail after that injury, all my thought was, I need to make sure that the doctor's okay with this, because then my wife will accept that answer, because there's no doubt that I was going to finish. I came for three reasons. One, to help finish the training cycle of these horses. The second would be what these horses can do for veterans. <sighs> Thirdly, what I want to do is do this for me. Being in the backcountry, no matter whether you're on mules, horses, somebody else's horses, it gets the marrow of your bones. And it's just my passion. This is my passion being back country. Um, last year, it was taken from me. I'm um, having cancer and surgery. I couldn't ride. So for me to be able to get back out here and do this, it really means a lot to me. I've been really fortunate in life to do a lot of things, be in a lot of places. And until you get to be back here, it's absolutely a magical place. <clears throat> It doesn't really matter what state you're in, who you're with. It's just something that I personally like to continue doing for as long as I can. The hardest thing that you'll ever do in your life is look at yourself. And you do that in the most honest and pure way while on these animals. It's really just a mirror. It's the things in the mirror that you don't see that will ultimately change your life. We're taking a bold step in doing this. We're taking a bold step in the way we help veterans. I think it's a great responsibility, not only to tell this story, but to give these horses a chance and to give these veterans a chance. I think I, I got a chance to see everything they've got, reaffirmed all the work that we did. You know, I have zero concern about these guys and, and passing them along to the students. 
You know, obviously they're not polished. They've got a lot of rough edges on them, but it, it makes the program that much better this year for the guys who get the opportunity to work with them. This is the most important thing we do. The mashing of the horses and the veterans is really what makes us unique. We try to identify core aspects of the individual in the, in the horse and match them together to really complement each other. We're looking for an individual who really realizes that he can do it, but he needs help getting going. And I was really one of those guys where I would not necessarily ask for help, but I would do something where I was put in a position to help myself. Never really seriously thought that this would be something I would I'd be doing and have the opportunity to to pull a Mustang off the land and, and train it from being the first person to touch it and seeing where he is now is that guy's definitely got a special place in my heart. So a really unique experience and I encourage those people that, that have that thought or inkling to do so to take that step. Sean Dunham, Bernie, Texas. Served the United States Marine Corps, United States Army, Third Armored Cav. Did two tours in Iraq. And this is my old pony, Hambo. My name is Chase Spiegel. My horse is Uh Oh. I served in the Army as a combat medic for six years. I went to Afghanistan in 2010, 2011. My name is Josiah Russell, this is Parrot, and I served with 1st Armored Division in Iraq and 10th Mountain Division in Afghanistan as a combat engineer. What I'm trying to do is create a mirror reflection so that that horse is projecting who they are back onto them. And when guys start to realize that, that's when the change really begins. It's through this matching process, it's through this horse-human connection where the walls begin to you know, get graded down and then crack and then eventually crumble. town where I'm from, they don't have much to say. They watch TV at night and they work through the day. Rise with the sun and they said when they're drunk. Most of my friends, oh, they don't get out much. They've got pine trees for miles and they all carry guns. And they pray to the Lord in the name of his son. Dirt roads for days and not much in between. If you ever pass through, take your hat off for me. The town where I live now it gets lonely as hell. Cost too much for a beer and a well. Most of the time I feel like a mirage. And I spend the whole day talking my own ear off. Feel like a book full of matches that have all been burned out. Got my head above Brooklyn. Oh, 
the line.